Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Music Technology. Today, we're looking at Dino Park. Dino Park is this little box. Inside is a DSP. It can run virtual physical models of classic vintage synthesizers. So far, there's a Mini Moog in here, there's a Prophet 5, and there's an Arp Odyssey, and a few other bits and pieces too. The idea of the box is that it can run these essentially software-like synthesizers as hardware. So all you need to do is plug a MIDI controller directly in the back and... You can play. Like so. The Dino Park DSP comes from the old Creamware Pulsar, which was a card you could stick in your computer many, many years ago that would give you a virtual mixing environment, effects, and these rather remarkable instruments. And those instruments have been have been sort of dusted off, <laughs> pulled out, repackaged, and stuck inside the weirdly named Dino Park. But despite the name, the actual synths inside are pretty darn good. And the great thing about it is, is that you no longer have to take your computer to your gig if you want to use those particular software instruments. You can use them on here. Now it's not a VST host, so you may have seen before. This will run only its own synthesizers, but there's plans to have a lot more of those. Currently there's another three or four which are in beta, which we can have a little bit of a play with, and there's more coming down the line. So a simple usage would be that you work on the synth of your choice, dial up your sound, create your thing, and then save it as a preset, take it to your gig, and you can just play it straight away. No latency, no problem with crashing or any of that computer nonsense. You just plug your MIDI controller straight in the back, dial up your sound, and off you go. Totally brilliant. So how do you edit these things, I hear you say? You've only got two little knobs on the front. Yeah, I know. The editing comes via a software plug-in interface. So when you want to get down and dirty with the programming of the sounds, you load up the plug-in, which will run on your computer like so. It's a decent looking plugin. It looks like the hardware and you can get stuck into all your automation and changing and programming with that. But let me step you through a few of the sounds. This is the Mini Max. Mini Max. Which I wonder what that's supposed to be. But simply on the front here, it tells you what the preset is. You dial up the instrument on here, dial up the preset on here. If you just want to step through things, you punch the button. Now one of the advantages of the DSP driven virtual physically modeled or whatever they are since inside here is that they have polyphony. So this may well be a mini Moog. But it doesn't have to play like one. Thank <laughs> you. 
But obviously I'm just stepping through a few presets here. I'm not trying to do anything clever, particularly. I've mapped the knobs here to a few of the parameters within the editor, which allows me to access things directly. You can do that with a direct connection. I can plug the launch key directly in the back and access stuff over MIDI. However, your MIDI controller has to be set to what the MIDI controls are inside here. You have to, you have to get down to the MIDI implementation chart and work out what it is you want to control and have your keyboard set up to do that. And so that might take, might take a little bit of rummaging around and sorting that out. But if you're going via software, as I am here, just for convenience sake, then you can map and learn and all those sorts of things in the usual sort of way. There are some additional controls within the plugin, like for instance, I've got a chorus and a flanger and a delay, and I've got some control over modulation and bend ranges. There's also a mixer section, which includes some saturation. And a little bit of EQ. You also don't have to select the presets from here. If you have it connected to a computer, you can pull up the presets on screen. For people confused by this screen here, this is a Surface, a Microsoft Surface. It's not an iPad. This is running Bitwig, and I'm running the VST plugin editor for this within it. I'll bring you closer in in a minute. But from here, I can select presets directly, and that throws that into the Dino Park. When I'm selecting presets here directly on the front, it doesn't really affect this, unless there's some sort of magic jiggery poker I have to do to route one into the other. Doesn't really matter. It's really nice having a polyphonic mini. Lovely, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice, that is. The Dino Park comes as a kit. There's a couple of different configurations with different outputs on the back. There's one you can get with knobs on the top that are mapped to, you know, nice parameters. And it comes as a kit, which is one of the easiest kits I've ever seen to put together. It's just a matter of screwing a few things, a bit like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
but that enables you to understand how you can upgrade it and add things to the little panel, for instance, at the top. This comes out, new thing goes in, plug things together inside. Having built the thing in the first place, you have a better idea of how that all goes together. And the first time I put it together, it took me about 10 minutes while drunk during a live stream. <laughs> so it's not difficult. I guess ultimately it comes down to, to what it sounds like. Well, it's a mixture of things, a mixture of things for me. So what it sounds like, which is undoubtedly great, but also how usable it is. I mean, you've got this front end, which is a little bit lacking to say the least. I mean, I can change instruments and I can change sounds. I'm gonna demonstrate a whole load more sounds in a minute, but that is pretty much it. Everything else has to be done in the editor, which is fine. But if you just wanna tweak something a little bit, it makes it awkward. You have to do a little bit of, of pre-planning. You can't just stick it in your bag, take it to a gig and expect it all to work. Well, you can, once you've set that up, once your MIDI controller is properly mapped and all of those things work together. So you're probably in reality gonna be taking the computer along anyway in order to use the editors, in order to make sure everything is working correctly. I mean, I don't know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be up to you, I suppose. But from another point of view, I can put this up on a shelf and I can just dial up a sound whenever I wanna use it. I can work on some presets and just introduce them to my music without having to worry about it. I have other external gear. I've got mixers and bits and pieces to run everything through because it's this box that's making its own sound. You're not reliant on your sound card. You're not reliant on the audio out of the computer because that doesn't have to be part of the setup. You can run this thing on its own. So as a way of adding potentially large numbers of synthesizers to your setup, it's really quite interesting. I mean, considering the price of high quality virtual instruments, you're probably looking at, you know, 100, 150 pounds for a decent virtual synth these days. Within this box for your 300 quid, you're gonna get three, maybe four decent ones that are gonna run always, whether your computer works or not, sitting outside the box with its own output, its own volume control, and MIDI control either direct or via your door. So its ability to integrate with the system is pretty darn good. It just requires a little bit more thought when you're actually gonna go down and control it with something. Because it's not like a hardware synth. It's not like something like this, which has its own controls all ready to go. And this, the Sculpt, is very similar in nature to the Dino Park, because they both run some form of virtual digitalness inside but this one has its own control system right on the top. This can, if you buy the upgrade. Interesting, isn't it? The other thing they're doing with this technology is that they are building it into a Eurorack module. Now I've seen the pictures online and what is awesome about that is that they've pulled a whole load of CV points out, which means that you can get in there with your modular, run it through it and start modulating parameters because that's, that's the greatest difficulty. Because for instance, when I was setting this up this morning, I thought I could plug the launch key straight in and then have these knobs controlling stuff. Yeah, sort of, but the knobs here aren't mapped to anything useful in here. And then when you go to something like components, you plug this into your computer, run the component software in order to remap these knobs. That only exists while the launch key is still on. It doesn't seem to store itself in here. So when I then unplug it and plug it back in, these have gone back to what they were before, not to what they were on the screen. I don't know, maybe that requires further investigation. So you need to look at what your MIDI controller can do. Can you map stuff and retain those settings when you plug the two together? So there's a slight extra level of hassle in having to do that. I mean, I wonder how difficult it would be to have further access on here where you could go into an edit mode, dial up the parameter and hit MIDI learn and learn it directly. Would that be possible? I don't know. I mean, it's all software based. Who knows what's possible in those sorts of scenarios? So Overall then, I don't know, I quite like it. I mean, the sound, I've got nothing but good things to say about the sound. It sounds fantastic. The interface looks, I mean, it looks a tiny bit dated perhaps, but then it's coming from quite a long way ago. But once you start mapping a few controls to things, it just becomes easy and it's fast. There's no latency because it's coming out of the box, not coming out of your computer. You have to do a little bit of shenanigans in your software to get the the editor and then routing a MIDI track to it and then the editor back to the MIDI thing, but it depends on your software. But it's not a difficult thing to achieve. The only thing that perhaps gives me pause for thought is that you can only run one at a time. 
So it's not multi-timbral. You can't have all these synths going at once. You can't have multiple instances of these synthesizers. You've just got the one. Whatever one it is you dialed up. Of course, you could have more than one of these boxes, but then that starts getting rather expensive. So perhaps considering you've got, you've got great sound, you've got great controllability via the software, the only place it falls down is the fact that you can only run the one. But that's enough talking. Let me run you through some of the sounds. Let's just set this up on something so you can see it a bit clearer. So we're currently playing with the Minimax. You've been through a lot of those sounds already. Just see if there's one or two more of interest. There's about 50. Let's try the Pro 12, as it's called. Let me just map the resonance and cut off. See my favorite two knobs over here. I'm not going to spend any time trying to program up something nice. I'm just going to have a look at the presets.
give the Odyssey a go. Of the interfaces this is probably the hardest one to fathom. I think the you know the contrast and this orange stuff is sticking out so much you can hardly see what the sliders are on. But hey never mind. Wow.
The organ, the B4000, is an optional organ for people who like organs. <laughs> Which doesn't sound a whole lot like me. probably notice that changing the preset doesn't seem to have any impact at all on the on the user interface. Which is a shame. I thought that did for some reason, but no, that doesn't seem to be happening. Now there's a couple of extra synths in here which don't have editors so if I just zoom straight in on here you can see there's drum and bass whatever that may be now I don't have anything now particularly mapped to anything useful so we'll just go through a couple of Presets. Okay. There appear to be kits in here as well. So you have something on the low octaves, bass line. Then you have a drum kit. Then you have a bass line again. Just come out a little bit so you can see that I'm actually playing that. It's not a loop. Yeah, well, anyway. So there's a whole load of stuff, so it appears, in the drum and bass bit. If we go to the next synth, it's called F M Agia or F Magia or something. So this is FM synthesis, presumably DX based of some kind. Thank you. 
See, modulation and pitch wheels don't appear to work in this particular scenario. But I remember that sound from my DX100 from a million years ago. Okay, moving on to Lightwave. Lightwave is a wavetable synthesizer.
there you have it. <laughs> the Dino Park. Strange little box. Easy to make, easy to put together. Not desperately expensive. Got a whole bunch of synths inside. Yeah, I quite like it. And I'll be very interested to see how it develops. Very interested in the Eurorack version. I think getting some modulation in there, some CV, some stuff which is there, dedicated to the module, actually there, so you don't have to mess around in an editor. That would be really interesting. So there, bit of a sound demo, bit of some thoughts and opinions on it. I hope that's been helpful. And in the meantime, go make some tunes. <laughs>